Hi guys, Adit here and thanks for joining. Today I am going to present you the series on Streamlit as I have promised. Today it will be our episode 1 and it is based on the introductory part on our Streamlit. And as the introductory part does not involve any codes to write and so I have not shared any source code in the description below. But in the next episodes and also the further episodes that we will write some codes over there. And so I will drop the link of my github and where you can carry out practicing with the help of the source code I gave to you. And the further episodes will be uploaded on the third day of the previous video that is today it is June 25th and the next video that is the episode 2 will be released on June 28th. So stay tuned and do subscribe to our channel and now let's jump into the introductory part. The topics that we will cover in this video are what is streamlit, why we use streamlit, setting up streamlit and exploring our streamlit. So what is streamlit? Streamlit is an open source framework for machine learning and data science teams. It allows us to create beautiful and attractive web apps in just few hours. So in order to create a web application, we use at least a particular programming language and with the help of the programming language we will create a web application so here what is the use of our streamlit so our streamlit acts as a particular bridge which connects our programming language to our web application we can also put it this way like the streamlit creates an user interface for our web application. So why Streamlit? We all know how the data science life cycle looks like. So first we will understand the problem and then we will collect the data and we will clean and prepare our data and then we will explore our data using exploratory data analysis and we will build a model for it and we will evaluate the model using the metrics and then we will finally deploy our machine learning model as an web application. So now we know that Streamlit is used in model deployment part and Streamlit is also useful while we use our exploratory data analysis too. Our Streamlit supports many Python packages such as NumPy, Panda, Scikit-learn, Keras, PyTorch, Lightning and many more. So now let's set up what are the basic necessary things that we need in order to build a streamlit web application. The first thing we need is Python. In order to download Python we have to go to the website python.org and in downloads column we can choose whatever device we use and we can download the particular version for it and also we need some code editors there are a lot of code editors in the market out there but i usually prefer to use either sublime text or visual studio code in order to download sublime text we can go to the website sublimetext.com and we can download it for windows mac and linux too and in order to download visual studio code we have to go to the website code.visualstudio.com and in which we can download it for windows and we can also download it for mac os and linux too the next thing that what we need is a virtual environment which is by default we can use command prompt in our windows and we also require a github account so in order to sign up for a github account we have to go to the website github.com and we can sign up over here and in order to deploy our model we need an account in our streamlit too so go to streamlit.io and then you can sign in over here and a most important thing in our streamlit website is they have a huge community where everyone are friendly and 
they will clear whatever doubts we have uh, instantly and there is also a blog page too you can go through that and finally we have to install streamlit so in order to install streamlit we have to go to our virtual environment and type in the code pip install streamlit so cmd and i will type in the code pip install streamlit and press enter and yeah for me the requirement has been already satisfied so it's not an issue here and now let's start exploring streamlit so now we are using our sublime text code editor and in which we will create a new file and let's save it in the text desktop and i will name it app.py and here i have created my python file and now let's import streamlit in order to import our streamlit we use the code import streamlit as so here as is the alias function that helps us to rename streamlit to any other particular comfortable name we want so now here i'm going to use it as st so let's run this app now in order to do that we have to open our command prompt and then we have to track it to the particular path in which you have stored your file so i have stored it in my desktop and then i will run streamlit in order to run our streamlit we use the code streamlit run and your file name that is app.py here and now we can see that our streamlit app has been opened in our default browser and my default browser is chrome and i also suggest you to use chrome so here is our basic web application and now let's look through what are the available options for us so the first option we have is rerun so whenever we do a change in our code we can use this and we have a shortcut here too that is r and we can clear cache using uh, c and we can deploy our web app using this option and we can also record our particular web application using this option and we have the particular section for documentation and we can ask our questions and we can also report bugs too and there is an another option for streamlit for teams and we have settings here too so we have two options in our settings that is run on save so every time when you save your code it will automatically run and we have an another option named the show app in wide mode so in order to explain this let's type in a code so let's type a small piece of code so st dot write which is a function that helps us to uh, transfer the text message into our web application so in which i will type this is my first web app so let's save this and rerun here and here we can see that here is our typed text message that is this is my first web app and now we can go to settings and show app in wide mode and let's save this and here we can see that our screen has been widened and this text message moved to the left side and now we can leave it in the default way. and yeah i hope you guys enjoy this video Thanks for watching, like the video, leave a comment down below and let's meet on June 28th.